Friends, greetings, grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens, ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. Friends, we greatly appreciated those of you who have contacted us uh, and let us know what you think of our videos, have given us some information about where you're watching them and also have offered some contributions, perhaps pictures or short clips you've taken with your cameras that we can use in future videos. Thank you for doing that. Keep doing it and use the contact details that are on our website to make your connection with us. Today is the fourth Sunday in Easter. It's known as Good Shepherd Sunday and you can probably guess therefore that the Bible readings for this Sunday reflect this theme of God the Good Shepherd and indeed also of Jesus the Good Shepherd. But we'll look into those themes a little later in this service. But let's now move into a time of prayer. I've based the prayer I'm about to use on material that comes to us from a couple of websites in the US and written by two folk by the name of Joanne C C Carlson Brown and John Birch. Friends, we're not gathered in one place, but through Christ the Good Shepherd, we are brought together as one. We share together in the whole community of saints when we gather in prayer, the saints on earth and in heaven. So let's come before God in prayer and let's initially come to God in a time of quiet prayer. Let's be still for a few minutes and allow the things that are whirling around in our brains to settle. Let's take a couple of deep breaths to become aware that God is close, that God invites us to take time for renewal, to take time to restore our souls. Shepherding God, lead us beside still waters and restore our souls. Help us see the way we should go, the way we should live. Remind us that you know each of us through and through, that you call us by name. Breathe your life into us. Help us to celebrate your constant goodness toward us and toward all. Lord, help us to follow you wherever you might lead. Forgive us when we stumble and when we stray. Forgive us when distracted we lose our way. Assure us deep down that we are forgiven and help us to recognize that you are the one to whom we can turn, the one we can lean on, the shepherd who leads us safely to the fold. In the name of Christ, amen. Surely Psalm 23 must be one of the most well-known passages from the Bible. The words of the psalm are known to people who are otherwise totally unfamiliar with the contents of the Bible. And the psalm, which was composed two and a half thousand or more years ago, has been put to different music so many times since. Actually, I love that version that is uh, used as the theme music for the BBC comedy show, The Vicar of Dibley. Let's listen now to Psalm 23. The first reading is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Uh, the second reading is from John 10, 10b to 11. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. people picture God as some kind of wispy, undefined force or an all-knowing sage or a remorseless judge. But that's not the image of God that comes to us from the psalm. 
In the psalm, God is pictured as the perfect shepherd, whose nature is to offer the best of care to the flock. There's nothing remote or impersonal about the image of God in this psalm. The writer of Psalm 23 pictures God as the one who seeks the best for us, one who can be utterly trusted. Here we discover an image of God as one who provides green pasture, a place of peace and renewal, who walks with us even through the deepest, darkest valley, which of course the King James Version of the Bible describes as the valley of the shadow of death. The writer of the psalm sees God as the one who offers sustenance, a banquet even, when dark foreboding forces seek the worst for us, who brings into our lives all that is good, and with that loving kindness, mercy even for our sin. God is described by the writer of Psalm 23 as the one who offers a safe and eternal dwelling place. In the short snippet that we heard from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel, we heard Jesus identify himself with this image of God. He calls himself the Good Shepherd, the one who can offer to the flock abundant life. And indeed, the one who is indeed ready to give up his own life, as indeed he did for the sake of the flock. No wonder the words of the Psalms speak to us in times of duress, when difficulties and threats besiege us. No wonder the Psalm is read so often at funerals. Its words genuinely bring comfort and solace. In my years of ministry, I've been privileged on quite a few occasions to pray for people in their last hours. And my normal pattern for that time of prayer is to begin by reading Psalm 23 because in the psalm there is so much said with, with so few words. I then continue by offering a prayer and then a blessing for the person as they take that final journey. Psalm 23 really does contain words that offer comfort to heart and soul. The Lord is our shepherd. Even when we walk through the darkest valley, the valley of death even, we are not left bereft, we are reminded by the psalm, for God brings comfort and hope. In recent days, I've been thinking about the nature of good leadership in these times of COVID-19. And you might like to think about the occasions that you've seen good leadership being offered, who's been offering the leadership and what characterizes the leadership. I think the words of Psalm 23 and the understanding of Jesus as the Good Shepherd are helpful in thinking this through. For Christians, good leadership reflects the way of God, reflects the way of Jesus. So no wonder when the church sort of names leadership in, the, in its life, it tends to use words that pick up the kind of pastoral imagery of Psalm 23. So we talk about the church offering pastoral care. We talk about ministers as being pastors and shepherds. It's also interesting that this has been picked up not just within the life of the community of faith of the church, but also in the secular community, which talks about offering pastoral care too. Picking up therefore the same kind of notions that are contained in Psalm 23 about caring for the other in the way that God cares for us. I see many people in these hard times reflecting this approach to leadership, this pastoral approach. And we need to encourage all of those who are offering good leadership. I remember, well, you might remember, should I say, that uh, a couple of months ago at St. Luke's, in the pre-COVID-19 days, I preached a, a sermon about leadership. And I drew on the writings of American theologian Brown Barr. Now, Barr reflected on the life and ministry of the church by using the image and the nature of high flying geese. Now, I haven't time in this video to go through all the connections that Barr made between high flying geese and the life of the church, but you can easily track down all that information by looking it up on the, the internet. It's, it's quite easily available. Barr writes 
that the leadership of the flock of high-flying geese in transit is shared and that those who are leading are encouraged by the other members of the flock who literally honk encouragement from behind. This reminds us that good leadership is not a one-way thing. Yes, it involves those in front being willing to lead the way, but it also involves the uh, group, the flock, in supporting them, in honking from behind. We may or may not have a leadership role in these days, but we can all be encouragers. We can all honk from behind. And all of us can be encouraged from the words of Psalm 23, which remind us that God is never away from us, that God is close to us, even in the darkest, deepest valley. For God is indeed the Good Shepherd. Let's move into a time of prayer, a prayer time for others. And uh, the prayer I'm going to use is based on a resource from the website ReWorship. Let's pray. Loving Shepherd, you lead and guide, you walk alongside, you prepare, you feed, you call. You are with those who are lost or those who stray constantly. Loving God, Shepherd God, we are grateful for the situations and people in our lives that offer healing and restoration, who reflect your care. And we pause now to offer our thanksgiving for the goodness and mercy in our lives. Good Shepherd, we also pray for those who walk in the shadows, those touched by suffering, illness and even despair. We pray for them and with them. We pause too to pray for those who live in difficult and dangerous places, where hunger and poverty and fear abound. We pray for justice and peace to reign. We pray for world leaders and church leaders, that they may reflect your way of service. And we also remember before you, Good Shepherd, our families and friends and our neighbours, our church community and the local community in which we live. And finally, we pray for ourselves, holding before you our own struggles and concerns. O oh, loving Shepherd, thank you that you do provide for our deepest needs. Enable us to be a part of our the answers to our own prayers and may we reflect your way in all our deeds and all our words in the name of Christ. Amen. Let me pray now a prayer that was written by St Columba, the missionary to Scotland whose base was Iona. Let's pray. My dearest Lord, be thou a bright flame before me. Be thou a guiding star above me. Be thou a smooth path beneath me. Be thou a kindly shepherd behind me. Today and evermore. Amen. And we continue in prayer as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. أبانا الذي في السماوات ليتقدس اسمك ليأتي ملاكوتك لتكن مشيئتك كما في السماء كذلك على الأرض أعطنا خبزنا كفافنا اليوم واغفر لنا ذنوبنا وخطايانا كما نحن أيضا نغفر لمن أخطأ إلينا ولا تدخلنا في تجربة لكن نجنا من الشرير لأن لك الملك والقوة والتسبحة إلى الأبد آمين We're still in the season of Easter, friends, so as we conclude this service, let me offer again the Easter greeting. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And may the blessing of the Shepherd God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you now and always. Amen. Keep safe. Go well.